Welcome back to another episode on the Wild Abstaining Podcast, the podcast for the edification of the abstinent Christian. Listen, whether you're a newbie or OG, I want to make sure that you don't miss anything. So make sure you head over to the YouTube channel and push that subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit the bell notification as well. That means you'll be notified so you never miss a live interview. Um, if you know you're out and about, you got things to do. All you have to do is tap in on your streaming platforms and wherever you listen to your podcast, you can listen to us on the go. If you would like to support this podcast, you can do so a couple of ways. One is by becoming a channel member. All you have to do is go to the YouTube channel, hit the join button. That's going to be right next to the subscribe button and you'll get further information. Another way to do so is uh, while the interview is live in the chat section, you can send a super chat at any amount, any donation. It's all helpful. Or once the videos are posted, when you go back and watch the videos, um, underneath the video, there's going to be a button that says thanks, and you can send a donation that way. So thank you in advance. Also, quick disclaimer, uh, so that we don't get flagged on these platforms and get kicked up, you know, up out of these things, we're going to try our best to use some code words uh, for some other words, such as using the P for pornography. Uh, excuse me, no, we're going to just use P for pornography, M for masturbation, and relations uh, when we mean sex. So just just, you know, keep up, follow along. Um, uh, besides that, I'm your host, Shakia, and I want to ask you a question. Have you ever thought, does porn corrupt sex? If so, I want you to question no further because I'm going to be discussing that with my guest tonight. So try wherever you are, put your hands together and welcome Mr. Antoine Thurston. All right, come on, Antoine. Come on, come on, come on. Look at that hole in the shirt. You hit the gym today <laughs> for you this interview, or what happened? No, I, I mean, I, I'm actually with work. I haven't been working out as much. So I'm going to start doing some more home based working out. Mm. But I, I do try to hit the gym and stay healthy and, you know, stuff like that. So okay, I got to get help. Screen, Antoine. <laughs> 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 Okay, listen, Antoine, for those that don't know who you are, uh, just take some time and let the people know who Antoine Thurston is. Definitely, definitely. Um, so I, I'm here at college, at the school. Um, I work for South Florida Bible College and Theological Seminary, uh, where we equip believers uh, with an institution of higher learning, uh, where education is essential and the Bible is essential. And we equip believers um, through academia. Um, we have... Um, we have a degree from associates all the way to doctorate, fully national accreditation. And I do church and community engagement. So what I do here is I connect with churches, Christian organizations on the behalf of South Florida Bible College and Theological Seminary to promote enrollment and to empower the believer to fulfill their purpose through academia. Um, I've been preaching for over a decade. Um, um, I'm multiple generations of ministers in my family. So revivals, mental health. I have two books, um, My Bondage and My Freedom, From the Mental Institution to the Pulpit, mm -hmm. Volume 1 and Volume 2. And they both detail. Um, I went through depression, suicide, suicide ideation, low self-esteem. I didn't like myself at one time. Um, I got exposed to a cult activity and witchcraft. Um, but through the grace and the love of God, God set me free. And so I Amen. empower others through those books which you can find on Amazon as well. So uh, that's basically me in a nutshell. And I like, yeah, I like to go to the gym. I like to work, I like to work out. <laughs> but other than that, you know. <laughs> okay, amen. I didn't even know that much about you, Antoine. So I got to learn as well. So thank you for sharing that. Um, and on top of it, the voice is real heavy. It's given like minister, pastor. It's very deep, very commanding. Was the voice... Pass down. I knew you said it like a, a lineage of pen, uh, ma, uh, ministers, but was the voice also passed down? Are they all husky and deep? Well, probably on my dad's side, men's voices are deep. Okay. okay so, you know, you know, so okay. kind of well yeah. All right. I just, I was just curious. I didn't know <laughs> where it came from. Okay, Antoine. So listen, I don't know you that well. We, we uh, actually, a couple years ago, you interviewed me, um, but I haven't gotten to know you a lot, right? So before mm -hmm. I get in your yeah. business, and I think what we're going to be talking about tonight um, is very heavy, but very necessary. You're going to share some personal um, stories as well. But before we get that deep, I just want to play a little game with you. So can I play a little game? 
Yeah, 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 definitely. Play a little game. I think so, yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. No worries. Yeah. So the game is called fi uh, Fib. So it's basically just fill in the blank. Um, I'm going to ask you a question and then you just fill in the answer, right? Whatever comes to mind, you know, quickly. It doesn't have to be super, you know, deep because I'm not going to ask any explanation. I'm just going to take it at face value. So the okay. first question okay. is one word that describes my abstinence journey is. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't thinking about that. Um uh, I would say uh, protection. Oh amen. Okay. The color that describes my abstinence journey is white. The length of time I thought I would be abstinent was. I mean, I'm still abstinent now. Amen. So maybe the last two people were struggling that question. So uh, let me just uh, clarify. So a lot of us make a decision that we're going to be abstinent, right? And mm -hmm. we think it's maybe going to be a year, two years, six months, four years. How long did you think in your mind you'd be abstinent? Like, oh, I'd be maybe four years. I'll be married from now. Two years. I'll be married from now. Did you have the ideal in your head? Oh, when I would lose my abstinence? Or yeah, like when you would abstinence? get married. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, honestly, I thought I would be married earlier in my maybe 20, 20s, but I'm 34. So I don't know, just 20s, I guess. Okay. 20s, 20s. Okay, so maybe I'll change it. Maybe I'll put age. Maybe age will clarify it better. Okay. Um, yeah. If I could have a superpower to help me abstain, it would be? Self-control. Mm, come on, Antoine. He didn't smirk, okay? He said, I'm serious. Okay, amen. My biggest struggle with abstinence has been? My eyes. Mm. Um, my The biggest benefit I have received from abstaining has been? Say that again? The biggest benefit I have received from abstaining has been? Peace. Amen. Uh, something I wish someone would have told me about abstaining is. Stay away from, stay away from lust. Mm. Okay. Okay. And then this one, you can uh, go into depth. Uh, it doesn't have to be quick, but the story behind my why is in regards to abstaining. Honestly, um, the reason I'm really abstaining, I'm 34 years old. Uh, when I was in ninth grade, I was brought up in Church of God in Christ, but uh, Pastor Pastor Grimes, uh, one of the pastors, lead pastor, they used to have abstinence retreats, and they used to took us away um, to a hotel one day, and they talked about talked to us about the consequences of sex, um, and they also um, invited us, and they actually used to have banquets as well, banquets mm -hmm. for abstinence through for the church kids. And um, I made a vow that I would be absent. They gave us a, a promise ring and all that stuff. And so I, I made a physical vow to God that I would not have sex um, until I met my wife and I was married. Until that day, I have not had sex with a woman and and, and anybody else um, except for you know pornography. But um, as far as the biological, physical peace, I have not had sex. Mm. So I've had abstained in that context, but mm -hmm. that's the reason why my vow to God. Amen. Wow. Okay. Amen. I want to see, I'm trying to stay just focused because it's interesting that you uh, took time to differentiate between that. I've, I've never mm -hmm. heard anybody really break that down and say, Hey, I've abstained from in this aspect, but maybe not this aspect. And I'm sure we'll get more into it with the questions. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to like stay right there. Cause then boot the time be gone. Yeah. Okay. So let's yeah. get into the meat. Now you ready, Antoine? Yeah, I'm ready for the meat and T-bone oh, steak. Oh, ain't no T-bone steak. It could have been meatloaf. He talked about some T-bone steak. Just know it's meat. Okay, we're going to get to the meat. Right, so right, the right. first thing I want to ask you is, how were you introduced to uh, P, right? I'm going to try my best not to use, you know, but how were you first introduced to P? Well, there were several ways I was introduced. One, well, actually, when I was in elementary, um, mm -hmm. I did not know at the moment that my father, my late father, who passed in 2014, had an addiction, um, struggled to porn himself. 
Mm. Um, I was in elementary. I was in elementary. And honestly, just being curious, I just want to watch a movie. And I grabbed a VHS or a tape, put it in the VCR, and popped it in, and press play to see what it was. Boom, pornography. Um, but I never t really took it in because I was just an innocent kid. But the next exposure was um, seventh grade um, when we had the when, when when computers actually started coming out into your homes. Um, and so I looked into a a, a drawer, um, and it was a DVD of of, of a P mm -hmm. of a P. And um, and then when my one of my best friends um, that used to be one of my best friends. He ordered P on online. You know, he had to order it back in that day. At that time, it was only available um, through certain channels. My dad worked for Comcast and stuff like that, so he ended up ordering it, and, and it, I had access to it through that. Um, and then at, at night, you know, around eighth grade, you know, there were certain channels you could you you, you it's like it was sex. It was real P. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, like about twelve o'clock, it was mm -hmm. called erotic. And that's and I'm talking about like real, you know, P for real. So that's how I was really exposed progressively, uh, multiple times. How when you said elementary, it's it's interesting that you said like it didn't do anything for you, but it did enough for you to remember that, right? That is a core memory you have from that young of an age. So when you say elementary, how young are we talking? I can't remember. Or like grade, grade. okay, probably not fifth, not fourth, maybe third. Second, mm -hmm. second or third, maybe. Okay, and then seventh grade is when you first saw it and then had a liking mm -hmm. to it, right? Like, yeah. what, no. I know you said, and my condolences, I know you mentioned your father uh, passed away some years ago, but you had yeah. found out that he had an addiction. How did that come up? Mm -hmm. How did you find out that he had an addiction to pee? Well, honestly, what really happened after... I saw the DVD. I didn't know who DVD it was, mm -hmm. but I assumed it was probably my dad's. But I, didn't, I still didn't know if he was really into it. Like, and then when I got exposed to it, um, what my dad used to do, which I found out, I, I actually went to his room and he used to close the door. And and I was trying to get to him. I said, "Dad, dad, dad," and I, he didn't say anything. So I opened the door ajar just slightly, and I looked in, and it was, it was porn tape. I mean, a pee on. Mm -hmm. uh, video on a P, mm -hmm. and he said, "Hold on, hold on, wait." He was in the restroom. He was in the restroom. The door was closed, but he didn't want me to come in because of what, what he was doing. And so, from that moment, I knew that every time he closed his door, I knew mm -hmm. what he was doing. And so, all those tapes in the behind, behind the the TV in the room, those were his peeps. Wow. Okay. Um. Yeah. And so, so I found also other DVDs. Hidden throughout the house uh, for his peeps. Was there ever a conversation between you, you and your father regarding? The peeps? only conversation, the only conversation was when I got caught and I was supposed to be doing a homework assignment. And I was, I was M. I was mm -hmm. doing my thing. I was having a relationship with myself. Mm. Um, and he caught me. And it was like, oh snap. And my dad wasn't really mad. Um, there was one time he was mad because he thought I was supposed to be doing homework and he popped me upside my head. But because he struggled, yep. um, <clears throat> you know, it, it really wasn't a big deal. I mean, he, we, we did have conversations as far as I had my, my struggle as well, but it wasn't, it wasn't about you can actually overcome it. Mm -hmm. You know, there were times, um, I remember my dad and I were at a football game, Miami football game. And the girls, the cheerleaders down, down, you know, doing their thing, doing their thing, they showing off and all that stuff. And he said, look, man, look. And he said to me, and I really wasn't paying him no attention, but he said, man, you can sit here and look at P, but you can't look at real women. You know, and so, you know, them type of conversations sometimes that we had. You when know? you said that he, um, it really wasn't no big deal or, you know, he didn't make a big deal of it. I was thinking because he was engaging in it as well. Right. Yeah, so I was, I yeah. was interested in what, if it, it was it not a big deal because he too found pleasure in it or was it not a big deal because he empathized where it's like, I, it has a hold on me. 
Yeah. I know now that like how it can get have a hold on you. So do you think he saw it as like, oh, it's something boys will be boys type thing? Or was it something do you think that he felt kind of had a grip on him, right? And like now it has a grip on you. What do you think his reason was that it wasn't a big deal? Most definitely that was the reason. Um, because he, it had a grip on him, he was struggling with it. Mm. He couldn't, he couldn't empower me. Mm. I was, I was like this one slave can't help them another slave be free if they don't know how to be free. Wow. And I mean that in a more, more general sense, mm -hmm. um, you got to know how to be free. You got to know how to get free of something before you actually help somebody else do it. So my dad couldn't help me in that area. Um, and so it was, it was just a kind of a go-to thing, you know? Ooh, hey man, that, that was a gem. Uh, if y'all didn't catch that. Um, do you think P, P is a chain reaction um, that leads down a rabbit hole? Or do you think it just kind of, it can just stop there? Mm, you don't just stop it. Mm. I, I, I say it like this. I'll say it like this. I used to smoke marijuana. And I started getting into the bad habit of smoking it. And then I, I had an epiphany. I'm like, let me stop now before I get addicted to it. Mm -hmm. And I was I was going out of my way to smoke Mary Jane and be with Mary Jane. And and I'm like, I'm I, cause I, then I put a hole in my pants because the blunt fell and all that from my pants. And so <laughs> you said not the pants. They gotta stop now. This is too much. These yeah, yeah, burnt my pants. But I had a moment like there's a place where you can you have self control and you can mm -hmm. stop. But when it comes to pee or any addiction, it's like that dopamine and all that hormones get to running, and you get used to that emotion that is released, that hormone that's released, and you run after it and you chase it mm -hmm. over and over and over again. And so for me, once I got a taste of it with the M and mm -hmm. the all that came with it. The emotion, the sexual, the orgasm, all that stuff, it's, 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 it, it's, it creates a memory in your mind. So it, was, it became a hardcore addiction. Mm. Hardcore. We, okay, let's talk about this rabbit hole, right? So I've always heard people say it doesn't stop there. And hey, there's a set, exception to the rule because somebody will argue me down like it stopped there for me. That's it. Okay. All right. All right. So exception to the rule. But what I hear often, even with studies, right? People that study this in depth where they say like that chasing that, that hit, right? People will say like um, when crack first came, like, it, you know, hit our communities, especially people were chasing that first high of crack. It will never get it. Maybe it's for other drugs. I always hear with crack. You're chasing that first high. Right. And so the same thing I've heard with pornography is like, you're chasing that, that release, right. That high. And after a while, it doesn't do anything for you. Okay. Let me clarify. No, not, not that P doesn't do anything for you, but they'll say you may start off with like heterosexual, uh, uh, P right. Where people are like, yeah, I'm not into no kinky stuff. No, you know, it's just guy and girl, but then they'll say after a while, it just, it, it, it doesn't do anything for the person. So then you'll see people start delving into other types, right. Uh, homosexual or um, ancestral or bestiality, right? It's like this rabbit hole where I think in a sober mind, it's funny how you say addiction, but in your sober mind, you would say, ew, right? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. what, what am I? But in that moment, you're chasing that release, anything to get that, that orgasm, right? To get that, that hit yeah. Yeah. where it takes you down a rabbit hole. Have you heard of that rabbit hole or is it just me? And I heard about it and stuff. No, I 100% agree. Me, personally, the rabbit hole, I couldn't look at homosexual. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm a man of man. I, 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 I can't, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I want, a, I want a woman and man. That's it. Woman and man, I don't want no animal. I don't want no furniture. You know, none of that. I, I just, I you never said have to furniture? Yeah, none of that. Oh, wow. okay. And so, you know, it's about, like you said, it, it really is a high. It's mm. a high. It's an emotional sexual high. But for me, um, my rabbit hole was. Wait, ooh, before, did, before, before you get to your rabbit hole, I just, because yeah. I, I know where you're going. Before you get to your rabbit hole, I just want to um, ask. Okay, you, so you said the furniture thing, right? Because I was talking to somebody and we're really um, clueless in this area, right? 
when you okay. say venture, were you being facetious or is there really like P that has to do with like furniture? So, so you can do M with your hands or you can do M with a pillow. The pillow, the way you position it on the bed is going to is gonna feel different than when you're on top of the pillow or the pillow is on top of you. Literally, I mean the actual pillow. Okay. I've even, I've, no, I've even had a conversation with other family members of, of men that are using teddy bear. So instead of going getting the doll, you just try to find something in the house that's soft and 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 and, and uh, pliable or whatever. You can use it how you want to to make yourself feel good. Okay. And then and then on top of that, you got you got the sex, you got the, you got the toys, the actual toys. Right, right, when right. You right. the toys online. So I even I got into the toys. Um, you got into the them. toys. Yeah, just the small, the real small ones. Wait, small hold ones. hold on, Antoine, because you're talking to me like I know. I'm trying to keep up. Okay, oh, Are you okay? Hold, hold on, hold on. A, a vagina toy. Oh wow, wow. Like this, look like this. It's a vagina, and it comes with liquid. It can, actually some of them come like with a mouth, vagina, anal. Um, and you buy, you can order it on Amazon, you can order online, you go to the store, buy it, uh, and they deliver it to your house. Okay. Incognito, literally. Nobody know what it is. So. Hold on. Okay. So this, the, okay. Cause you going down a whole nother rabbit hole. I didn't even know. I guess I didn't even think about this being a rabbit hole. I was talking about the rabbit hole of people just starting with like, cause, okay, hold on. Answer, cause I want to go there. No, no. No, nobody wants to watch pornography. I mean, pee without an orgasm. I've, I've never, I've never, even when it came to books with my cousins, I ain't just looking at the pictures and I want to do that. Oh, like the purpose the of looking at the picture is to get it gets you aroused, and then mm. because of that arousal, you want to release. So you never just look at it and be like, "I will either you go either go get the real real thing, either that's going to influence me to get the real thing, or right. I'm coming in for it." I okay. want some type of feeling. I want. I want a feeling. I want to feel something. I don't want to just look at this. Right. Looking at it don't satisfy me. Looking never. Talk. Looking at it just stimulates you, mm. so you can you can create a fantasy off of that what you're looking at. Not a reality. It's a fantasy. Mm -hmm. So okay, I get okay. Ooh. So I was thinking the rabbit hole leading to, and this is why I say this, right? A couple of years ago, you interviewed me. Uh, I probably remember better than you, but I remember I was saying, we're getting to a point, especially uh, we'll just say within the church where um, everyone says they're struggling with P where it's almost normalized. Now there's no more sting. There's no more. Um, I, I would even say shame, right. That like, we shouldn't be watching that right now. It's almost like normalized. Like the, the pastor is saying, I struggle with it. And the deacon, I struggle with it. His wife, everyone struggles where it's now it's like, it's almost like it's almost normalized, right? Where at one time I just feel like there was a heaviness to it and there was an urgency to be like, we shouldn't be watching that. Right. And I said, yeah. you know, what would bring that sting back? If, if we talked about the rabbit hole that P can bring you down. Right. And I remember I interviewed a young lady a couple of years ago when I was going to come out with a podcast and she had talked about, um, and I had the same conversation with her and she was like, you're absolutely right. And she said, because I had got into ancestral P right. And she had explained that to me. She was like, I would watch like, um, a father and a daughter, even though they weren't, you know, really, but she was like, that's what I, like it, it was a rabbit hole that it went down. And I said, if we talked about that more, maybe it would bring back people saying, OK, this actually can be dangerous. Right. This actually can um, be a perversion of how God created, you know, sex to be. Uh, yeah. So that's why I was like, it's a rabbit hole. The more I heard about it, I just read um, a trending type of P is uh, gifts like grandmothers. I would like to. Hmm. Right. So it's oh, old, yeah. yeah. So not MILFs, but gifts. Like now people are searching out uh, grandma. Oh, right. Oh, no. Yeah, no. It. Yeah. no, it was no. out there, even with me. I, I couldn't do it. I like a if I'm a, if I'm a sin, if I'm gonna sin, mm. I don't want to be looking good and all that stuff. I don't want men hang <laughs> this, this is the truth, I right, it. Antoine? I, I think, just want, I, think I knew what I like. In a no. sober mind, I think they a lot of them would say the same. Right. Yeah. Like I, it, it's it is like a, a perversion. And and not the, I use that word loosely because I think when people think of perversion, they think of like pervert and they think of like 
people messing with kids. But uh, if you look up the definition, it's saying like um, changes something from its original design, right? Like yeah. corrupting yeah. it, distorting it. So I think yeah. to just get back onto what I was saying is if you ask a lot of people in their sober mind, they're like, no, nah, I'm not into that. No, I don't like horses, right? No, I don't yeah. like another man, right? But it's anything to get them to get to that, that release, right? It's like just watching heterosexual P is no longer doing it for me. So let me see what else is up here. And then you find yourself watching stuff that you would never admit. You'll say all day, oh yeah, I struggle with P. And everybody's like, yeah, of course. Yeah, ain't no harm. Like it's, it's normal. But then tell them the rabbit hole it took you down. Tell them the stuff that you're watching that in your sober mind, you would never admit. You know what I mean? So that's the rabbit hole I know, but I didn't even know this. You know, we'll say that M usually accompany, accompanies P, right? They go hand in hand, right? No pun intended. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. like you said, I didn't know. Now, this is another rabbit hole where it's like, not only you just using, you know, digits, your hands, fingers. Now there's artificial props, right? And we talk about, because one of the things I said is like uh, P being the corruption of God's design, right? We believe that our mm -hmm. creator created sex and he had a certain design oh, for yeah. it. Yeah. And P is corrupting that, right? That's why you're yeah. watching yeah. stuff in your sober mind, you would never. But now you just brought up another corruption, right? You're mm -hmm. saying that you went online and I want to know how you even got there that you're, you're ordering toys because I never, I only hear women. I really do only hear when I hear toys, I think of women. Yeah, yeah, toys. So yeah. for you to be like, nah, we got toys yeah. too. That's another corruption. Yeah. So please help me understand how uh, did you get to no more hand? Yeah. I want a toy. Um, so when we talk about, well, I want to go back to. Go ahead. Um, when you talk about perversion, the. the, the the Greek and the Hebrew word for iniquity is something that's been from its mm. original, from its original, take a spoon and you bend it. It's no longer what it's originally made for. That's what wow. iniquity is in Hebrew and Greek. But God also says, I'll forgive you of your iniquities in Psalms 103. Um, and so God can undo the bending. He can undo the twisting or the perversion of the thing. Amen. But, but we have to acknowledge it's perverted. You can't call mm -hmm. it a mistake. You can't call it an addiction. Or normal. Well, it's not normal. Uh, they have to call it a sin and an iniquity to be healed from it and, and delivered. Um, as far as the toy, just like crack and marijuana, you you do you want something more disgusting than last. And so I would go. How did I get the, to the website? Well, that came from the DVDs. And then when I would be on my lap, my my computer in high school. I would say I'm going to watch some some P, type in P or anything to do with it, and it, it and you just see you go to it, milfs, all that, mm -hmm. um, all that stuff, uh, and then they would show most of it at that time would show the uh, just a preview, and I would get stimulated off of that enough to try to get me one, get me a quickie, mm -hmm. and, wow. and 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 be about it, you know, um, and to the point also. Even at my, my grandma's house, you know, some of the, the men in the family had stashed it away at the grandma's house, or, and everybody knew it, probably except for grandma and granddad. Yeah. But the other folk knew it, you know, the tape of the DVDs. And so I was even stealing from my uncles, and they didn't know I was stealing from them, their, their DVDs to take it home to put in my PlayStation 2 and close my door, mm -hmm. you know, and did have another party. Not the party. You know? Yeah, it was a little part, my little personal little party. That was a dark um, party. That was a dark party. So how did party. you get introduced to the male toys? Well, okay, here's down at the rabbit hole we talked about. Mm -hmm. In high school, that addiction, it's like, it's like my therapist called it cognitive dissonance, mm -hmm. where you have two different beliefs at the same time. So mm -hmm. you know you're smoking, you're smoking, Cigarette, but you're killing your lungs, but you're you smoking. Mm -hmm. You know it's bad, but you want to quit, but you don't quit. Yep. So with addiction, and you see even people on cocaine and crack sell stuff and do stuff they wouldn't normally do, but because of the mind that's been changed and manipulated through those hormones and so forth, um, I became so compulsive in my, in, in M that I used to M so much 
my my uh my male can I say it? Can I say the P word? Penis, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my there penis was hurting. My penis were hurting for days. Mm. I go to I go I'd be in high school and that's not hurting. I don't, the only person I could tell was my dad. I couldn't tell my mom. I said, Dad, my, my, my penis hurt. They said, What are you doing? They masturbate. I've been beating it. Mm, and beating it. even yeah. with lotion, even with lotion, it didn't matter, even with a towel. Um, it just got to the point where if I would masturbate once, it would still hurt because God didn't make your, pe- your penis for your hands, mm. He made it for a woman's body. Mm-hmm. And so I, and that can really, um, dysfunction in men if you keep doing it long enough. And so what happened, what caused me to get the toys, the, the female vagina toys, mm-hmm. was can I still get a stimulation orgasm without hurting my male organ, organism? And so the toy, I could do that stuff a whole time. And one, I would never, my penis would never hurt. But when I do, the moment I do it with my hand, it hurt. Or with a towel, it hurt. Or I would do the pillow, multiple pillows, and it would not hurt as much. But the, the vaginal tubes with with like it was rubber and they, they literally designed it. I'm sure according to a woman's anatomy. Literally. Mm-hmm. Right? And they got some of them with a booty, big old booty, big booty licious, all that. And it's a fantasy. It's a, it's a sexual perverted fantasy, but it's what you choose and what you chase. And so with that, it was just felt better. I could get in. Well, I want to get in, do my M, do my, my P, and I go in. And I don't have the pain in my male um, organism. So let me so ask you this, Antoine. Yeah. Because you're like high school, I think you said like high school? Well, in high school, I never did toys. Okay. So you were <clears throat> older when you got the toy. Okay, look, this is what I'm trying yeah. to ask you. I know earlier you said you did it, you were abstaining for God. So did you yeah. ever after hand the toy? Because the toy is more realistic, right? Yeah. Did you yeah. ever feel like how can I frame it? You want the real thing? Did you feel like you were still honoring God? Like you was did you still was like, okay, I'm doing all this, but I haven't had relations with a woman so it was still like honorable it was still okay or was there ever guilt to be like i'm playing what you doing antoine like what like how did you kind of reconcile that well to be biblical the word fornication or sexual morality is the greek word pornea Mm -hmm. when we get the word Mm porn and so you you can't be you can't be pure and sexually immoral at the same time it's Mm -hmm. impossible and when I came to the conclusion that, although I was struggling, that was one of the reasons why I walked away from God in high school. I walked away from God because I was struggling with porn, because um, I, I was addicted to it, um, and I felt like I was a hypocrite. Definitely was. And oh, so you did have at, like the tussle. You did have this yeah, kind yeah, of. Did. Okay, I just I didn't did. know if you ever. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. I did, and I would ask God to forgive me over and over. I even mm-hmm. do the more God help me. I would have those moments, but then I'm like that. That that little. Thing in my head is like, man, go get you some, some more. You know what I mean? Get it in there. Um, and and there are times like I was like, forget it, I just do it. Um, and then honestly, and then there were parts as I got older, I would I would do the M and watch the P because mm-hmm. I want God because God won't give me no wife. Oh you know? wow! And as a trauma, as a as a trauma trigger. Mm-hmm. Um, like it's really more of a temp came more of a temper tantrum. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna give me a wife, um, so then I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Mm-hmm. And to so have a wife, God, you know, you ain't gonna satisfy me. But why? I'm gonna go ahead and watch this. And that. Then, I'm, but next thing I know, I'm, I ain't gotta forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry, <clears throat> you know, so forth. And and then, um, I started preaching, and then around 2000. 13. So even after I started preaching, I was still, I would do good, then I would make the decision. Mm. Not making the mistakes. Because a mistake is not, it's not a choice, it's something you do accidentally. Mm-hmm. Uh, make constantly making that decision to do it. That's real. You know, uh, it gets to a point where, you know, you're making a decision to do it. 
thank you for uh, defining that, right? Because that is true. You're saying like it wasn't, I was tripping and falling and, oh, snap, what's going on? Hey, how that take get on? And what, where the lotion come from? Right? It wasn't that. It was calculated, right? You yeah. made the decision with every step you took to be able to watch the P and engage with the M. So thank you for even just uh, pointing mm -hmm. that out that it is a decision. So a couple yeah. years ago, you shared with me um, that your thoughts had became corrupted in a way uh, when you started having sexual thoughts of a family member. Can you speak yeah. to that? Definitely. Um, so what porn did, like I said, you're always changing the fantasy, but what it also does, it, 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 it twists, it skews your view of sex and women. Mm. So in porn, you got dudes that got a 10, 20 inch penis. That's not reality. Right. And the world is always pushing a 20, a 10 inch, 9 inch. That is not even the most, that's not even the average. Guy. Average, the right. The average the average man is going to be five to six. Mm -hmm. And if you really know how to do it right, all you need is just that. Okay. And, and that's old school. That's old school, G. I'm, I'm, I'm like just straight up real with you. Like I've had male pastors that tell me, Twan, most men don't know what they're doing because they think they know what they're doing. They haven't sex with their wife or their woman, but they will never ask their woman, how, how, to, how should I make you feel? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. advice I've gotten from a pastor. I just want to ask your wife when you get married how she likes it. Right. Because you don't know what you're doing. You think you know what you're doing. Ask her what she wants, how she likes it, where yeah. it's nice at, how you do this, how you do that. Because she knows her body better than you. Mm. You know, and that's the advice I got from pastors that could keep it real with me. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have this perverted view from the world that's saying 10, 20 inches. No. You go go have sex with a, a with a horse right now. Right. You know, it's gonna kill you. Mm. And it's porn out there like that. It's porn, it's pee out there like that. Mm -hmm. It's so perverse. Absolutely. And so what it did was, and the reason I said all that, because I would look at, started seeing my aunties as prey. Mm. So I'm seeing my first cousins as prey. Like, I'd be like, God, I don't want to have sex with her. I just want to jump on her. Mm -hmm. And have sex with her. I would have, I would start M, having, doing M with them in my mind. With my aunties and family members in my mind. And when Jesus said, You look at a woman in lust, what do you think God is looking at? Was looking at? I may not have done the physical act, but I've done it spiritually to God. Mm. And that's who I used to be. That's what I used to be. That's what I used to do. That's what it did. Yeah. Let me ask you, <laughs> thank you for uh, sharing that because I don't care. Uh... Many may not share it or be open about it, but I know there's some people can relate because like I said, studies have said where people will chase that, right? And in your sober mind, you may be like, nah, that ain't it. But that perversion, that by any means, and like you said, when a person has an addiction, we'll use right now, uh, heroin is crazy, right? Fentanyl is crazy. The things you would do to get that high, you would never do in your sober mind. Right. But it's by any all you are chasing is that high, that fix. Right. So like morality is out the, the, the window. Right. It's like, yeah. yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. Are you going to give it to me? Right. So yeah. the same thing with that addiction where you're chasing that dopamine, you're chasing that high, you're chasing that release. Anything that I can make up in my mind to just get it done with, right? Like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, her, oh, him, yeah. Like, that's where it can go, but people don't want to go that deep. And that's why I said when we had that conversation, when I said that's the things we need to start talking about. That's the shock yeah. value. To say yeah. you're you're a nice looking man, Antoine. I'm sure there's women that you can pursue and you know, all these, all these amazing things. But in the midst of that, perversion mm -hmm. had gotten had started to corrupt your mind, right? Yeah. Where mm -hmm. go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. Go ahead. It's, oh, I, I was I, just going to say, like, your aunt, your first cousins. I'm sure that is not your it was, ideal. It wasn't even just that. Like, later on in the years, I had to look, because my cousin had had a baby. Mm -hmm. And she's the cutest, sweetest little thing in the world. And she was, like, maybe two. And because of the porn, my natural mind would never even think of touching her. But when you're so, when you open your mind up to that demonic stuff like that, having sex with a child, it comes out as a thought. Mm, and it came off as like a thought. Jesus. I was like, where the, where the heck did that come from? Mm -hmm. And I was in church. 
And I saw one of the girls, I'm like, why is this desire to go back there and have sex with this little girl coming from? Porn. Porn. And so um it 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 by any means necessary. It will get to that point if you submit to it. When you say to, oh, Jesus, you said to. Um, and I never acted on it. Mm-hmm. But just the mere fact that thought, it crossed well, my mind. Yeah, yeah. And, thought, uh, and so, it was like, it shocked me. It shocked, even this, I had watched it one time. And we had some, my, my mom's, um, some girls spent the night. Little girls spent the night for my, my little cousins and stuff like that. And one of the girls took out a lollipop and she put it in her mouth, so I took it on a lollipop. And guess what came across my mind? A blowjob. Hey, uh, uh, you know, blowjob. And I saw it and I was, I was like, oh my God, I'm 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 just messed up in my head that seeing a little girl eat a lollipop stimulates me. Mm. Or, or it makes me recall sex on porn that women do with their mouths with men's penises. Mm. They're hanging and deep throating. Is that how you want to look at somebody else's daughter or little kid? If God was to show that stuff on a screen in front of the, in front of the church, and which it will be one day because the Bible says it, everything that's in it will be exposed. Mm-hmm. So even though nobody else knew about it, I knew about it. God knew about it. That's what porn does. That's what sex outside of marriage does, period. It just perverts. Perversion. Sex, I was going to say, that's what perversion and, and, does, right. And what it does, and it don't just do that. It don't just open you up to that. Yes. I actually ended up doing an overdose because I was listening to all this R&B stuff, the, the rap, the music, Tupac, Wayne, all that, and then on top of that, watching porn, opened more doors to where I did an overdose in 2011. So some of us are opening demonic doors and portals, listening to this stuff, putting this stuff in our ear gates and our eyes, and then it, it gives room for demonic spirits to influence us to do certain things that we normally wouldn't do. And so it's a portal. It's a portal, it's a door. It's a portal and it's a door. And the Bible says in Proverbs, if a person does not have self-control, and another version says like a city without walls or a mm. house with no windows and no doors. So imagine having a house and you have no doors or windows. Imagine every critter and thing is coming in that house. That's Proverbs. No self-control. It's like you got a car and you're driving on Island 5 or the state or the highway. You ain't got no doors in your car. No windows. So that was me at that time. You know what I'm with P and M. I'm trying to find the words, Antoine, because let me just say, it's, it's a lot of thoughts going through my mind. Uh, but what I'm thinking is like, you can't be the only one, right? Like you, you can't be the only one. And that's why I say like, we have to go deeper. We hear so much. Oh, I'm struggling with P and I used to be watching P, but it's like, we have to go deeper because it, I, I keep saying the word deep, but it's like, this is some like true perversion, right? Like, and yeah. it's, it, it, and like, that's what needs to be addressed. That's what needs to be talked about is like where it can take you, right? You said, even in that moment when you had that thought, you shocked yourself. So there's almost like a disconnect. There's a like, who thought that, right? It's not like you're one where it's like, no, it was me. It's like, it's like two, like I can't explain, but it's like you're talking to something else. That thought crosses you. You're like, whoa, where did right. that come from? Or whoa, why am I having those thoughts? You know what I mean? And it's like, right. where are these conversations being had? Mm-hmm. With, like, oh, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um man, I'm I'm trying to gather my thoughts. Um uh, why do you think society is attracted to P? Do you like I, now? I'm like, do people just not know the doors that it opens? Ugh, but okay, why do you think, or even you, you could talk about from a personal standpoint, but also just why do you think this attracts people? 
at the high rate it does. Like, okay, hold on. Let me ask you this, Antoine. It's a lot going through mine. Do you think we have normalized P in society? Most definitely. Look at the artist. I mean, I, even just, I'll, I'll talk about Beyonce, you know, or Chris Brown. When Chris Brown came, first came out and Beyonce, it was actually decent music. Mm -hmm. I'm just being, it was really just nice, decent. It wasn't, it wasn't trashy. It wasn't nasty. It wasn't crazy. But you see what, what it does when people just keep going on that rabbit hole. And you look at them now, it's like, what in the world kind of music are you making? And you can hear it. You can see it if you have eyes to see it, ears to hear. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I feel like it is normalized because one, um, like with my dad, you struggling with it. So we don't say nothing. We we can't expose something we're sleeping with. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. So it's not easy to talk about something. You can't even be healed from something. Biblically, James says this. It was a day. Confess your sins one to another that you may be saved or healed. If you can't talk about it, one, it says you haven't overcome it. Wow. And if you don't talk about it, you can't be healed from it. Mm. God cannot, God can never, and the word confess in the Greek is homologeo. It means to say the same thing. I mean, you got to say what God calls it. You can't say what you feel like saying it. Mm. You got to confess it out of it, and it means publicly. You got to say it out of your mouth. People, you, we, we, we've normalized it because it identifies with dysfunctionalism and the way we think carnality. It's carnal. Mm. It's carnal. It's perverted and it's carnal as well. Paul even said sinful sexual immorality or pornea shouldn't even be amongst Christians. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, but look at the church. Right. I actually went to my grandfather because I was struggling with it still. I said, Granddad, I'm struggling with some stuff. I think I might need to sit down. And he said, you need to deal with that. He didn't sit me down, but as you and God, you need to deal with that. As I, where I am now, um, if I was my granddad, and I came to myself, I said, yeah, you need to sit down. Thank you. You are not emotionally stable and yeah. secure to be a, a preacher or a leader in the Bible, in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. If you got an addiction, the Bible says the qualification of a leader is one, he shouldn't have an addiction to wine. And let's just make that more general, an addiction. It means he should, a leader should walk in self-control. If you cannot have self-control, you can't be a leader in the church. Mm -hmm. That's what Paul said. That's Holy Spirit. That's what Paul said. People got these gifts, but you have no self-control. You are disqualified from being a leader. From what Paul said. I'm not, I'm not being legalistic. I'm not being legalistic. But looking at myself now and looking back, I go to my therapy. I get therapy every month. Um, I do therapy maintenance. And I said in my therapy session, in my journal, I said, I will never now, where I am now, going through deliverance and healing, I will never ordain or lay hands on somebody that does that has not gone through an assessment, psychological assessment or evaluation or this. Wow. You can do it. Because when you're not healthy as a person, you can't be healthy as a church leader. Mm, or lead, yeah, amen. Amen. And, and Paul and Paul said, if you can't manage your own house, you can't manage the house of God. Yeah. And yeah. so if I'm perverted, if I'm perverted and watching porn at night, I'm gonna be perverted in that pulpit. Ooh. I'm gonna be perverted while I'm laying hands. Mm, 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 it's gonna mm, affect mm. every part of my life. Man, Antoine, hold on, because whew, that makes me think about, oh, I want to cry now, I don't know why, but um, sexual sin just has a hold on so many Christians. Like, I had no idea until, like, starting the sexist trap, people coming in my DMs, and, like, it has me in bondage, people would say, right? I can't yeah, break free. Yeah. And I'm like, look, I didn't know that, right? I, I didn't, I don't know that side. So I was just like naive. And then you just see like so many pastors falling to it, right? It's like that that same sin is always sexually motivated or associated yeah. where it always snatches up a pastor, right? And I wonder, like you said, we're like, maybe they should be sat down because now you're bringing it into the pulpit, right? Because you, you haven't you had yeah, you haven't mastered that self-control in your personal life. So now it is going to flow over when you're standing in the pulpit and you're exposed to women and children all the time that, you know, trust you or not underneath your care. It, it boils over. And imagine if they were sat down and like, no, you got to get that in order. Right. So it just makes me think of like, 
you know, not maybe, but they they should have been sat down, right? And they should have did some yeah. some personal work um, before you are shepherding over a flock. I also want to ask you, right, for you to share something, um, I guess, like so vulnerable, uh, so taboo, right, about yeah. where that perversion bought you or brought mm -hmm. you. Is it because you feel like, because you had mentioned, like, um, I guess, like you said, you can't, the only way you can speak on something is if you've overcome it. Do, yeah. Are you able to, and I don't know how often you go this deep, but are you able to speak in sub -conf such confidence because you feel like you have overcome it? Most definitely. Now, yeah, most definitely. Um, even in my, my books, my, my previous books, I speak about it. And mm -hmm. I continue to speak about it depending on the situation and whom I'm speaking with. Mm -hmm. um, so every occasion doesn't always bring up that, that opportunity. Speak yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. well, speak, I'm, very, I'm very vocal, mm -hmm. uh, depending on, also, but it also depends on the group and the audience, the maturity of the audience, and so forth. Right. But sometimes, if I'm in, if I'm depending on the the environment or audience, I may give a general summary, mm -hmm. and I may not go as deep. Uh, but it all it all depends. Are you ever? nervous about the feedback or have you had feedback one okay let me ask you this right because i didn't know all of this have you ever gotten feedback where someone could relate um and then are you ever nervous about the feedback you'll receive where people could be judgmental um regarding what you shared um not really um i haven't really ever gotten negative feedback mm -hmm. Um, um, I've had some men identify with the masturbation on a porn, or if they're in, or with the, if they're with a woman, you know, trying to get out, or, or then we can really just have that conversation. We're starting to have a man to man conversation, mm -hmm. and then I'll identify and empathize with them because I was there, even as a believer, even as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Um, so. You know, I could, I could definitely, but I've never gotten really a, like a, you shouldn't talk about that or say anything. Mm. Well, cause I'm, I, I do think it's taboo. The, and I th the, the only time that it happened with me was, and I thought it was awkward. I was at a, um, what would it call? Um, it's a house for men getting their lives together. Big, I forgot what it's called. Like a halfway house? Yeah, halfway house. Mm -hmm. yeah, halfway house. Yeah. <laughs> and I was giving my testimony. And as soon as I said, you know, I guess beating my meat, you know, it's me. You know, I'm thinking I could talk real to men. But because there was a, I didn't know a female that came to the audience. And then one of the guys like, we got to put respect on it for the woman, you know what I'm saying? And for me, I was like, I said it, I'm like, dude, she a grown behind woman. She know what beating meat is. Mm. She, has a, she has a vagina. Like, come on. Like, y'all like, we two year old. Y'all in the halfway house. Why do you think you in the halfway house? You been doing stuff, you ain't got no business doing. It's like we act like kids when it comes to sex. I'm like, dude, you got a penis, you got a I can't say penis. Mm -hmm. Well, what you call it? A stick. Mm -hmm. Like, but then you sitting here doing it with your husband and your wife. Like, it's like people like we do this this dumb thing. I don't even know what to call it. It's like dumb, it's stupid. Either you want it or you don't want it. But you can sit here and put drugs in your body. Mm -hmm. Like, what are we gonna tell people? Mm -hmm. But the but the world can be nasty and vulgar, but we can't say what's really real. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is real. Right I was beating it, mm -hmm. and I was dysfunctional. But it, I guess we gotta make it cute all the time. And I don't have a problem with that. But that really was like a setting for like this halfway house. I wouldn't. It's not like I was sitting in a church setting, mm -hmm. a, a, a formal church setting. That was not ideal. It was a halfway house outside. Y'all were barbecuing. <laughs> Y'all were probably, I saw the setting, the environment, and I knew I could stay in that environment. Uh -huh. <laughs> but all of a sudden, now you as a man, you feel like I got to be respectful to a woman that's a grown woman in her 40s. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking to her, I'm talking to y'all. Yeah. It, it, it kind of ran me the wrong way because I'm like, bro, you need to chill with all that. We, mm -hmm. we outside. This is a man's event, anyhow. This right. is a man's event. This is not a woman's event. Mm hmm. Well, so I was some guys, speaking, some guys get kinda, you know, well, I was speaking it. more so to um, the intrusive thoughts you were having when it came yeah. to 
uh, children and relatives, right? Mm -hmm. So again, yeah. of course, men are going to be like, yeah, I was watching the P2 and engaging in the M because it's safe, right? It's, 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 we're, we're numb to it. It's almost like, even in the church, it's almost like, oh yeah, he just, he watched P. Like we don't have a, like a, a, a anger towards it, a, a frustration, to, you know what I mean? It's not, a, it doesn't evoke us to be like, let's help that person. It's like, oh, okay. He was, oh, he got caught watching some P. Oh, okay. It's, it's almost not like a big deal anymore. Like it just, it just shocks me. So that's what I'm saying. If we talked about that rabbit hole that it can bring you down or the intrusive thoughts that it can um, like kind of manufacture, maybe that'll put this thing back into it. Maybe that'll put the shock back into it. Maybe it'll put the urgency for us to have more groups or have more conversations around it. So I was speaking more so, and again, I don't know how much you've been able to speak, you know, on platforms regarding it, but I was wondering, was there ever men that was like relating to the perverse nature that can come from watching the pee? You know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. I never, I had a, I was at a family reunion years ago and I mentioned um, a family member comment at the family reunion that I mentioned that I had was addicted to pee and M and all that stuff. And I overcame through the grace of God love of God and the power of Jesus Christ. Um, and they said to me, um, sometimes you can't say everything because everybody else ain't as free as you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, that kind of made me feel like, okay, maybe they're not free. Mm -hmm. Because if my freedom offends you, my freedom shouldn't offend you. It just shouldn't. That's an indication to me that you are somewhat probably embarrassed or abundant yourself. Mm. And if you're offended at freedom and at someone else being free, most likely you're in bondage in some area in your life. You shouldn't, you shouldn't. Bondage brings shame. Bondage brings shame. And so if somebody comes to me and says I was, if I'm in the wrong setting, speaking vulgar, then I understand that. Yeah, mm. it's true. But if I'm in a, depending on the type of environment, if you had a campfire and you just really just talking, you can be vocal at a campfire because there's a campfire. But if you're in a, a domesticated formal event, you can't, there's no room for that. You got to know your audience. You got to know the environment you're in. Mm -hmm. But regardless, regardless of how it's said, if it's in tune with the audience and it's, even if it's respectful, if I say I don't smoke cigarettes no more and you smoke cigarettes, and you try to get free, but can't be free, but I got free, and you're offended because I talked about it. That's a personal issue you haven't mm -hmm. overcome with because you're not free. Mm. You understand? Yes. I asked you earlier, but then I took you somewhere else. Uh, but I'm asking you, why do you what what is attracting or what is the attraction to P for people? Why do you think most people um it's, it, a, it's a fantasy, it's a fantasy. It's lust. Um, and and I don't think I don't think people need to be shocked. They need to fear of God in them. Mm. They need to fear of God. Like, um, you know, I actually um I kind of used to do life coaching and Christian counseling. I had this guy come to me and he talked about he was having a problem with, you know, with P and M. And I told him to do an experiment. I literally told him and he did it. And I said to him, I want you to go to the toilet and start licking up the water out the toilet. And I told him to vomit in some cup and he vomited. It was, I, I said, I was, I was taking him through and I was reading why I was telling him to do this. I said, eat that vomit that you just spit out of your mouth. Oh, uh, right, right, right. Eat that vomit that just came out of your mouth. Mm. Go eat, go eat that, that boo-boo that, that came out of your body and lick up that pee, that urine in that toilet. Mm -hmm. And you can do it. I said, I can't do it. It's disgusting. Then why, how can you look at porn or pee and it's just a disgusting? Something in your logic, this ain't even spiritual right now. Your brain won't let you put your head in a toilet. Because mm -hmm, there's a that disgust, your, yeah. The, the thing is, you don't think it's disgusting. Mm -hmm, absolutely. A Antoine. That's problem. Absolutely. You don't think it's disgusting. Absolutely. And, and the scripture says, Apostle Peter and the book of Proverbs says, a fool and a, and a pig 
go back to vomit. They return the to their vomit, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Paul even said, I consider all things lost compared to the suppressing knowledge of Jesus Christ. That word trash, this, it really means garbage or feces. Mm. Paul was using some extreme language. <clears throat> Everything in life is, is my sin is garbage. Mm. So whenever you look at porn, matter of fact, go put your head in that toilet. Because that's what you're doing. Literally, I told you, do it. Your brain will not let you. Until mm. you see sin, like you see that toilet, you'll always keep sinning. Amen. It's a, it's a mental thing. Most people, you're not ready to be free. And until people ask to acknowledge you like sinning, you like being perverted, God can't set you free because you're too fake with yourself. You got to stop being fake. So I'm saying I don't. I'm struggling. You ain't struggling. You like it. Mm. You like it. You love it. You're in love with it. You made it an idol. Mm -hmm. And then part of pornography, a lot of human sex trafficking is in it. So a lot of them girls being raped. Antoine, you support, you support rape. We're supporting rape. We're supporting rape. Trafficking people that don't even <laughs> want to engage in it. We're supporting rape. Selfish. Let me tell you something, because, oh, Lord, you got my emotions everywhere. Uh, we, we, my, uh, oh, Lord, every month we do a um, Zoom calls, right, with the tribe. And we just had tribe talk on Sunday. And uh, it's a co-ed Zoom discussion led by tribe. They ask questions, get answers from their tribe uh, mates. <sighs> One of the girls was asking about uh, M, how do you stop? Right. She was like, sometimes I, uh, I I have a good run and then fall. And, you know, we just we talked about it and unpacked it. But one thing that I told her is there has to be a hate. Right. Like there has to. And what we talk about, like, there has to be a disgust because you go back to it because there's still pleasure in it. There's something that you still like about it. Right. Because you hit the nail on the head. There's some things, Antoine, that I think is disgusting. That even if you said I'd give you the maybe if you get to a certain amount, but like you know, like ten thousand dollars, I'm like, mm -mm, I, I literally can't, like, I'll throw up. Like, they're like, you can't throw up. I'm like, but I will, right? Because that's yeah, how yeah. disgusting it is to me. But like you said, there isn't this disgust, there isn't this hate. And so for me, one of the things I tell her is I pray, God, let me truly hate the things that I that you hate. Because yeah. this thing right now, I don't find hate in it, right? I don't, I don't hate it, right? Help me grow a hate in it, right? Because my car carnal being is like, no, it's good. Maybe I ain't had the hiccups that everybody else has. But if God says it's a sin and it's a no, let me grow, grow that hate in me, that disgust, right? So you said it. There's no, there's no disgust behind it. There's a selfish motive where you can read that these people are being trafficked. Right? Like they're not in the 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 in a, a, a situation where they're choosing, but still you'll block that out to please your flesh. Your flesh. Yeah. Antoine. And so to, to give something to that, honestly, I got tired of watching porn and then I did start to really hate it, but it was like, you gotta want what you really want. And so and I, give, I give an example. Mm -hmm. I installed Covenant Eyes on my phone. Mm -hmm. And I was doing no porn, that urge come. And so my accountability partner was my therapist and a cousin. So I went watching porn because of the app. Mm -hmm. The app, Covenant Eyes, which is a, a P app. P mm -hmm. app. But when I got that urge, when well, I was feeling lonely, and depressed and sad, and like I need me somebody to rub up on and God ain't giving me nobody or whatever. I found a loophole. I started finding yeah. a loophole through the app. And I was like, just let me just go delete this thing, un un uninstall it, and give me something and put it back on. Yeah, you're gonna find and I, it. And I had a talk, I had a talk with my, my therapist afterwards. And she's also a prophet. And she just she grilled me. And here's what she said. And she went right back to scripture. It's really just Bible. Mm. She said, until you die to it. Mm. You, always, you will always need that app. Ooh. Until you die to mm. it, you will always need that app. The problem is most of us are not dead. We're still living for ourselves. Come on. We, we're selfish. We just got to. And that's selfish. the part that's missing. We're not being honest. That's the real problem. We're, we're fake. We're just being fake. Mm. We're being hypocrites. 
Stop stop calling it a struggle. You ain't struggling. You keep making these choices. That decision you talked about, you keep deciding. You made a decision to mm. touch yourself. You have to replace it. That's what my therapist told me. Twan, you got to replace this. Your wow. brain is used to doing it. Every time you get stressed, you go to pee. So you now when you get stressed, what you go to that? I still had to make a choice. I still had to make a choice. God gives us choices. And we talk about this spiritual warfare. Can I say something? Can I really? Yeah. Hey, please. Hey. This, this was last right? year. And I'm a dreamer and I'm a seer in the spirit. So I see, I see angels, I see demons and stuff like that. Mm. And so God took me into this vision. And I went into this house. And in this house, I went through a portal or a door. And I saw this. I went into this portal and everything was pink, purple and pink. And I saw this eye on the wall watching me. And then I punched it. And all of a sudden, this sucky but sex demon jumped on me and started having sex with me in this dream. And I started quoting, and the Lord put in my spirit before then, I meditate a lot on Exodus 20 and 14, which says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't commit adultery. Um, don't commit adultery. And in the dream, the demon is having sex with me. Over and over, and I won't stop. The demon actually says to me, we don't want you to break the cycle. We don't want you to break the cycle. I see God in the sky in this dream, and he's doing absolutely nothing. God's not moving. God, I saw God. When I saw God, I saw God waiting for me to make a decision. God was, and what I was doing in the dream, as it was having sex with me, I kept saying, I will not um, commit adultery, Exodus 20 and 14. And I kept saying, when Joseph was tempted by Potiphar's wife, I will not sin or do evil against God. I was saying that in the dream to this demon. I was resolute. I was absolute. I was bent on pleasing God alone. I kept saying it over and over and over and over and over. And the demon just died. Mm. Another one jumped on, did the same thing. And a sword came. A sword came in my hand. I cut the demon up. God didn't do that. God was waiting for what I was going to do. And then, I kid you not, I came, actually this was actually a vision. A vision is in the dream when you're awake. I came out of that pink place. It was actually my brain. Mm. It was literally my brain. And then I cut everything up and it, everything was white and pure. And so, <clears throat> the spiritual warfare, the why, reason why some of us are losing, because we really, we're not ready to really be holy. Mm. God was in that dream vision. God was waiting on me to be Ooh. absolutely sure that I didn't want to sin against him. Do you want to sin against God or not? And demons, know, <laughs> and demons know when you want to sin or not. They know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want you to break Ooh. the cycle. How do you break the cycle? I was quoting mm. scripture the whole time. I was telling that demon and telling myself, I'm not sinning against God. I don't care what you're doing. Mm. Stuff, some stuff don't break until you become absolute and resolute. And stubborn in your decision to serve. God. Amen. Come on, Antoine. Amen. Some of you, some of us were so double minded. You're too double minded. The Bible says in James, a double minded person can't receive nothing from God. Mm. God can't even deliver you because you're too up and down. You don't know if you want to masturbate or not. When you make a decision, I'm not masturbating again, boom, that's it. That speaks volumes in the spirit realm. Mm. It don't matter what the enemy throws. No, I ain't doing it. I don't care how I feel. I don't care what I feel. I'm not sinning against God. That's why the cycle isn't breaking because you not you haven't become sound and 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 resolute. It has to be resolute. You can't be wishy washy. You cannot be wishy washy. If you wishy washy, you're gonna always be wishy washy and unstable, and the struggle will continue. You got to want to please God more than your flesh and more than these demons and more than the culture. A That's why you're struggling. you're struggling. That's why you're struggling. You're too wishy-washy. Amen. The Bible says James, and this is why some of y'all ain't got no husband and wife. Because God knows you are not stable enough to have a husband and wife. Ooh, amen, Antoine. Speak to the bondage part. I hear people say all the time, like, them being in bondage. How does one get free? Become absolute in your thinking. 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to serve God. I'm not going to submit to my flesh. I'm not going to be calling my name. And, and, and for me, talk to the Holy Spirit. He's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. He's there for a reason. And get some deliverance. I had to get demons cast out of me. That was one part. And I had to do self-deliverance. I said, Holy Spirit, help me. And Holy Spirit started casting demons out of me. Mm -hmm. And I'm on a toilet puking. But it wasn't enough to cast the demons out. I still had to renew my mind. What did that come? look like? We we hear that. Stay right there. When when people say that the re renewing of mind, what does that mean? That means taking the way I think. One, in order to renew your mind, you have to know your mind. Ooh! <laughs> you can't renew your mind if you're in denial. Mm -hmm. If I sit here and tell you and tell you you're arrogant, but you're in denial, you can't renew that part. Mm -hmm. The word renew is kind of like akin to renovate. renovare. It's like renovate. It's give me word, another word, renovate. When you renovate something, you're tearing something old up and destroying it and throwing it out. You're placing it with something new. When, when, you, when you renovate something. So the word renew is not just remaking something new, but it's also in the Greek present tense, which means it's continuous. It's continuous. It's nonstop. And so in order to renew your mind, you have to first know your mind. You have to know how you think. And you have to know and discern what thoughts are from your flesh or from God and from Satan or the world or demonic. Mm. You can't renew your mind if you're still at the club. <laughs> you can't renew your mind if you're still doing that stuff. That yeah. stuff don't help renew your mind. It corrupts the mind. Yes, yeah, it's pollutant. So part of renewing it's your mind. Part of renewing the mind is making a, a, a sound decision that I'm not going back. Come on. You can't renew your mind. You can't renew your mind and be wishy watch. Yeah. It don't work like that. One of the things you the girl you, said. It doesn't work. The girl that was saying she was struggling with M. I told her, you know, I have stuff that I struggle with. Um, and one of the things that I think about, right? Whatever works for you, but I be thinking like, what if the enemy is testing me, right? And God, kind of like Job, right? And it's like, um, you know, the, the enemy tests me, but God is like, nah, Shkia, she passed that. She, she ain't gonna do that, right? How do you think like in that moment, what if it is a test, right? It, not a, I should say a test, but like in my head, that's what I think like, oh, it's a test. And I'm like, who do I want to make proud? Who do I want to prove right? So it's like, I'm gonna choose God every time, right? I don't want him like thinking like, oh, Shkia's passed that. And then I fall to it, right? So it really is in that moment, like not myself choosing God. Right. Even if if my carnal, if my flesh wants to, I'm like, nah, at the end of the day, I'm gonna choose God every time. Right. It's it's a decision, like you said. And that's one of the things I used to pray that's uh with sin. I'm like, God, at least I used to say a heads up, right? Make me aware that I'm about to engage in this sin, right? Because sometimes you'll do some things you're like, oh dang, right? The aftermath. Yeah. I'm like, let let me be aware right before I do it so that I can make a decision. Like give, you know, give yeah. me that heads up. And when that started happening, I was grateful. That, okay, now you're aware what you're about to possibly do. Mm -hmm. Who are you choosing, right? Are you choosing yourself? Are you choosing God? Yeah. Which, which way are you going, right? And when I would yeah. choose God, I would feel good, right? That in that moment, um, God got the victory. So I just love this, how you're kind of like continuously bringing up a decision. And it it, it is a continuous death, right? Dying yeah. to ourselves. Uh, so listen. But I would also, Shakira, I would also say. Mm -hmm. I would have little sprouts, sprouts of victory over porn. But I will mostly always fall when I became arrogant um, or self-sufficient. Mm, and a I lot of our stuff. struggle, a lot of the real struggle is we, we put more faith in our strength mm. than the Holy Spirit. Mm. When I get tempted now, temptation still comes. Mm. I mean, look, I'm a man. I, the desire for sex would never go away. Mm -hmm. Attraction to women would never go away. God ain't taking that. It's how you manage it. Right. I think it's, it's, manage, okay. it's management. It's management. Mm -hmm. Women are beautiful. They fine. I, I ain't finna tell God to take my eyes out. No. Mm -hmm. I should be able to look at a woman like she fine, God, she bad. And then keep going about my business and living. I shouldn't lose myself and completely, you know, lose who I am. Lose control, mm -hmm. you know. So it's about management. 
You know, God sometimes ain't taking stuff. He wants you to manage it. Mm -hmm. And that's a part of that temperance that comes from the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and so I would tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I submit to you, help me. Mm -hmm. And I ask God every day, Lord, keep me from sin. Keep me from sin. Amen. Lord, I can, and I can't do this without you. Mm -hmm. I have to depend on him. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it without you. No matter how little I'll be, God, keep me from sin. Amen. Amen. Psalm 119. Yeah, Psalm 119. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mm -mm, no, you got it. <laughs> no, Psalm 119, verse 133, he says, order my steps in your word. Let not sin have dominion over me. Mm -hmm. I meditate on it. I meditate on Exodus 20 and 14. I meditate on those things. God keeping me and, and, and I'm walking in purity and holiness. And, like that. and, and, and even integrity. Um, Proverbs 20 and 4 <clears throat> says the righteous walk in integrity or, or, or blameless. And that word in Hebrew, mm -hmm. when I was taking a ministerial class here at school, we found out that the word integrity or character in the Hebrew means healed, whole, um, something that is holistic or healthy or uninjured. So integrity makes you functional and healthy. Mm. And so when we don't have in spiritual integrity, we're not healthy. And that's why all the dysfunction comes in that we, we're not whole. We don't have character. And so I want to have character before God. Amen. Not, not, not sinlessness, perfection, or holier than thou, but it's, it's character before God, the flames mm -hmm. before him. And when you can do that, God can trust you. <clears throat> when, when you can do that. And honestly, an older prophet told me years ago, God ain't gonna never give you a wife, you're gonna start watching porn. Ooh. I understand it now. I understand it now. And, and some of us wondering why, why that husband and wife ain't changed yet. You ain't stopped some stuff. Mm. You're hold, you holding up your own blessing. How are you going to have a husband and be masturbating? No, give it to your husband or your wife. Hello. That's hello. what God made. God did not give Adam hands so he could mash him with his own hands. He gave him Eve for that. Mm -hmm. And 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 M is very, it's emotion. It's, it's, it's dull as day. Oh. It oh. ain't got no emotion. I ain't got no woman to hug up on and kiss right. on and all that shit. You know, it's dull and dead. It's, 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 it's cold. Yeah. Yeah, oh. cold. By yourself. So that that's a real thing. That leads into, um, do you think P has corrupted uh, God's design for sex? Most definitely. Absolutely. So Most talk about that. In what ways do you think uh, P has corrupted it? We started talking about it a little bit, but. So like growing up, even in high school, women would always make this claim they wanted to end the conda. And, you know. Sit and I, in I high school, that. sit down. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> and the they want to end and I remember I told a bishop about this, and he said, Twan, he's the one that brought me into awareness about it. He says, he asked me, actually, here's what I asked him. I said, does size matter? I said, hey, bro, does size matter? Older guy. Mm -hmm. I don't really go to younger I don't go to younger cats for advice about sex. I go to older men because they know the game. They know mm -hmm. the game. They really know. And he said, and the first thing he asked me when I asked that, he says, you watch them porn? Mm. I said, what well, makes it sound like a porn? And he said that comes, that ideology, nine, ten inches comes from the porn industry. Mm -hmm. Perversion. It's advertised. Yeah. Big is better. Mm -hmm. When I tell you old school men taught me about that two inches, he said, if you know if you know what you're actually doing, mm. trust me. Trust me there, your wife will give it to you every day if you do it right. Mm. But the porn industry has perverted God's design of marriage. God created all that. Mm -hmm. He said, he, he don't know what he's doing. God, I guess God don't know what he's doing. I guess he just does. I guess God is ignorant. Oh no. How does how is the how does creation tell the creator? How to do it. Yeah. Let me show you mm -hmm. how you're supposed to do and it. And so God's design is perfect. Mm -hmm. And so and it's pure. Oh, and it's without and it's without guilt and shame. Come on. And and and, and then without demonic influences messing up everything. Right. My cousin, my cousin told me, Duan, I know you was addicted to pee, but she actually went out and had a lot of 
relationships mm. with men, and, and she was trying to break it. She was breaking it. She's still breaking it. She said, "Twan, Twan, I wish you get a virgin. I wish you. I wish you. I hope your wife is a virgin because this thing here. I wish." And she said this to me, Antoine. It's not even hell. That's the issue. It's the emotional, the psychological. Wow. I. It's the torment. It's the days and days and days and days and months. You can't get somebody out your mind and spirit. You. It's a real connection. It brings torment. It messes up your life. Cause she said, "Twan, I wish they would have told me more about this than hell mm. in church. Right. Don't just tell me about hell. Tell me about all the other stuff that comes along you know? so, while I'm living." Yeah, and so even <clears throat> seeing all the baby mamas and the baby daddy drama is not God's design, mm. and so. We live beneath our means when we step outside of the order of God. Let me and just honestly. Oh, go ahead. No, go honestly, ahead. one of the things that kept me from doing it with women in high school was I was one, I was scared to break my vows. Two, I didn't want to get HIV, AIDS, or STD. Mm-hmm. Third one was I didn't want to get nobody to break. Mm-hmm. That was those main three that kept me from yeah. going that far, even when I went to college. You know, I was like, man, I don't know. I'm trying to get nobody to break. Mm-hmm. You know, so my my P was a way for me to kind of get away and get me a little something something without getting me a little something something. Mm-hmm. Cheating. Mm-hmm. Half <laughs> stepping. Luke. Luke warm. Yeah, yeah, doing just yeah. enough. Uh huh. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. I was gonna say earlier. So one of the questions I've gotten in the past, you know, people want to be in your business, but I go, Shakira, you don't you don't use toys and uh. I always said, like, to me, it just didn't make sense, right? Like, my first encounter, I said, you know, Lord willing, amen, we'll be with my husband. I didn't understand, yeah. like, if you're sexually active, then, okay, it makes more sense. But for me, I'm like, I don't want my first encounter to be with me in a toy, right? It just, it didn't make sense. Um, and I also said I wanted to make an association with, you know, with the orgasm and my husband. Right. I wanted my body to know that's where it comes from. Right. Make that association that if you want this, you need him. So even if I got an attitude that day or I didn't been mean or something, you better get it right. If you want a little something, you that's the only way you get it. It's not, oh, I'll just do it myself. I never wanted that association. Right. And I think that's a way um, that that P has perverted God's design. Right. That you no longer seek your spouse for that. Now, I don't need them. I can do it myself. But was that really the design? Was it supposed to be so cold and so selfish? And and, and like, was that really the, the design, right? And I don't think so. And I think it, it you now make an association where that good thing, that release comes from yourself, right? What do you need your spouse for then? And especially when they'll start telling you, society start telling you, it's even good that you am because you know your body more, especially with women. They're like, men think they know what they're doing. They don't know they're in it for themselves. So you give no. them a little something and then you go take care of yourself. What? What? You know what you want. You can do it better, girl. Just go ahead and do it. Let him whatever. And then you, what, y'all? Imagine the disconnect. Imagine the connection that we are missing out on because we're now yeah. saying, oh, I could just do it for myself, you know, quick. Or even with men, they'll say, oh, woman, we're all lovey and dovey and you got to warm them up and y'all, you just want to get to it. So just skip all that and then you can just do it yourself. What are we talking about? Is that the association we're making now? Like we no longer need to come together for that because we can do it ourselves. And so with you now telling me with the, the men, male toys, and you're saying like they're, they're very intricate. What, what do they need the woman? Like, I, I, I don't, I don't know. It's getting more and more detached and more and more away from the perfect design um, and distorting what was supposed to be. So for you to even just mention that earlier, I'm like, my gosh, like I heard about the woman and their toys and how it's designed to, you know, stimulate and do what the man can't do. And now hearing about the male toys, I'm just like, my goodness, I don't know what's happening, Antoine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the first thing Satan did. (sighs) He made Adam and Eve think that God wasn't enough. And I can go outside of God and his knowledge mm-hmm. and get something better. And that produced death. Or in other words, 
Satan made Adam and Eve selfish. That's the original sin. It's about being selfish. When you look mm -hmm. at Satan, the Bible says he, be, he was so beautiful, he became puffed up and arrogant and iniquity was found in him. He became perverted through selfishness. Mm. It's not about me, it ain't about God. I don't care about God. I don't care about what God wants anymore or his design or why he created me. And so his whole, everything about Satan was, he was once Lucifer. He went from Lucifer to Satan because of, he was selfish. Mm. And I guess that's what, when it comes to that, that's what we're seeking, right? It's very selfish. It's like a, it's all about me. Where when we come together, it should be about pleasing one another, right? When it's God's sure, perfect design. Sure. Yes, absolutely. Sure. Right. You don't, want, you don't want to serve your husband or wife? No, because it's selfish. You just care about yourself. Let's talk about yeah. the expectations too, right? Because that that's one that I've um, talked about. So people always ask me, Shakir, you're not afraid when you get married and it's going to be small, right? They've planted this in my head. Never did I think about it. I didn't think about it, okay? What do you mean small? But it wasn't I mean, a thought in my mind. It truly was not a thought. Cause like the me being naive, right. Which was a great thing to me. It was just sex. I knew, you know, what went where. And I knew the basics foundational. Yeah. Right. But then when they start talking about size and girth and I'm like, I didn't I, know it was a thing. Right. But then, like you said, they've, I remember, I ain't gonna say too much, but I remember friends watching pornography and talking about big, right? And like the size and the expectations that it it planted in their heads, right? Until they uh, they encountered somebody with what was on there and it was like, that ain't it, right? Like, that's not what you want. Mm -hmm. But it was those expectations that it has to be this big or the expectations that uh, peace uh, sets up in a man's mind. That a woman's always ready, hot and ready and willing to go and want to do all the nasty stuff that they done seen in these peas. And then they want their wife to replicate that. And when they're like, no, no, that's demeaning. No, that's nasty. But now, mm -hmm. they, oh, my gosh. But now there's a disconnect, right? Because especially yeah. if you're abstinent, right? So there's people who yeah. are Christians who are abstaining and they're they're watching pee, right? And now this yeah. imagery and these things are being stored in their head where it's like, oh, when I get married, uh, we about to be doing that. We're going to be doing that. We're going to be doing that. And then you bring that perversion to marriage. And when she's like, no, no, I'm not doing that. Now it's a, it's a disappointment. There's a disconnect, right? But the truth is I didn't help you come up with these perverted things, right? You, P introduced you to that. You and the lady on the screen came up with that. And now you want to bring it in our marriage bed. And because I say no, now there's a disappointment or there's a frustration or I'm not open or no, I didn't help you come up with that. Right. We didn't get married and we came up with our own stuff. You brought that there. You brought expectations into our marriage. So let's talk about um, you. Right. You are a virgin. Um, you have not had relations with a woman. Yeah. Did pornography start to put expectations in your mind as to what intimacy was supposed to be? And, you know, when you got married, this is how it was going to be. Did you have those expectations? Yeah, I remember um, two instances. I was, um, to the point I dated a girl like a whole decade ago. Mm -hmm. And I asked her if she would give me head. You know, we got married and, or like in the like. No, nah, we were dating. We were just dating, but I was, we were talking about it. Yeah, but head and, in the relationship, the dating relationship, or future head in the marriage. No, nah, right near that. Okay, we I didn't clear it. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't give it that. You know what she said? To me? She said she actually said to me because I kind of kept pushing the envelope, like to get some. She said, "Twan, if you don't respect your vows to God, I don't want. I don't want respect. You. So I mm. give some. People will only respect what you allow." Whoa, 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 wait, hold on, because you said no, she we didn't, said we didn't, it, we, didn't, we didn't have sex. No, we no, broke no. it off before. No, no I want to clarify what you said. You said she said, Twan, if you don't respect your vows to God, neither will I, so she'll do it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear that. Wow. That's yeah, she, she, that's what she told me. So, wow. and a lot of women, some women steer away from me because they knew I had made vows. They're like, no, nah, I ain't even trying to get Twan. But when the other one found out, like, you made vows to God. I ain't messing with that. But she was like, "If you don't care, I don't care. Let's do it." Wow! Yeah. People respect people respect what you respect, and if you don't respect it, they don't they don't they won't respect it. But mm -hmm. I remember when I was trying to get some from her, 
specifically head on blood job. Um, she said, Antoine, you know, I really thought you were different. Wow. And that hit me. It hit me. <laughs> wow. He's like, oh, you I'm, did? Dang, I'm nasty just like these other jokers. Mm. I'm a slime ball just trying to get me something just like the rest of the other jokers. But because I didn't physically have sex with a woman, you know, I was still perverted in my mind. Mm -hmm. So being a physical, a virgin biologically, still didn't cut it. Right, right, right. You know, and so the second um, experience was, um, and I forgot the other one I was going to say, but. Um, well, I just I want you to speak to the things because you seem like you was watching it a lot, Antoine. I was, uh, I was a kid. All right, and then you, when you said ordering it, I forgot. I'm thinking you meant like ordering it in the mail. No, you talk about when it used to be like pay per view and stuff, ordering. Y'all was ordering on the oh. TV, and no one doesn't oh. come on your parents' bill. Y'all was okay. Y'all was on a different level, but mm. you watching all of this, right? So much yeah. imagery, right? All this imagery, all these scenes, all these acts that the girls is doing, the women are doing. Did you think when you get married, you was about to have that? Was you like, yep, when I get married, I'm going to ask her to do that little spin thing? Uh, or, like, did you think that all women did that in the bedroom? Were you taking notes um, and say, hey, I want this done in the future? I wanted it in my marriage. Actually, I was mm -hmm. dating an uh, individual. Um, I, I was dating somebody in the past. And I saw this movie. It, it was, I'm not going to say the movie. The guy, male, male guy was breast, was, was breast. The mother was breastfeeding her baby in the movie. Mm -hmm. And the guy in the movie popped his breast in her mouth and started breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. um, and and that from that moment in seventh grade, I always wanted that. That was a fantasy of mine. And so the girl I was talking to um, in the past, I asked her if I could do that if we got married. Mm -hmm. And so that became an expectation, even in a future relationship that I was in years ago with a young lady. Um, but and I would look at porn like that. I would go looking at porn to see if you know, the man was doing it just like the other movie. And stuff, some stuff really become comes a fantasy. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not really a reality. But did you know it in that moment? Did you know, like, okay, this is just a fantasy. This stays here. This only happens in P. I'm not gonna get this when I get married. <laughs> or did you think that you could take what happens in P yeah, and bring I did. it into your marriage? I did. I did 100 percent Yeah, 100%. Now, where I am now, I wouldn't want to do like probably none to little to none of mm. the stuff I saw. Um, and I would have that when I have a conversation with my wife, like, what do you, what, how, what makes you comfortable, what makes you uncomfortable? What are you willing to do, what you don't want to do? I, I really wouldn't, I don't even know because I'm like, I'm so disconnected from the past. I mean, not disconnected, but I'm so like, I don't care about it no more. Like mm -hmm. it's it's the past. Honestly, I really don't even think about sex. Mm -hmm. So it's like because I've gotten so purged and mm -hmm. purified that I don't even I really don't even think about it. Amen. And Lord, think, please don't, don't let I hope this don't bring up. And nothing. I'm not I'm not I'm not saying it's not supposed to have a you're not supposed to have a discussion, mm -hmm. but I mean you do need to have a discussion, but it shouldn't be like. If we don't do this, it ain't gonna work. I think that's dumb. Look, yeah. I, I'm the type of person, I'm more intimate than I am physical. So I'm a touchy individual. So I'm like, baby, let's have a talk. What are you what are your expectations? Or do you have expectations of sex? Mm. For me, um, I don't even know if I would want my wife going down on me. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. I don't I can't, I really can't answer it until it happened. Like we would have to be face to face. And if I don't, I don't know. I just don't know. I, I, That's fair. I don't want you to think too hard. No, come back, Antoine. Yeah. I'm glad. Come yeah, back. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Come on back. Um, there was a rapper. He said that he was like he does not allow his wife to give him, you know, fellatio. Uh, and for his, I don't, I, I don't know his reasoning. Um, and I've heard some men. It was like they, they've, they've associated with it being something like I don't want to say derogatory, but like 
something they allowed women to do that they didn't care about, right? Like, oh, I'm gonna get some head from her. Um, so like no respect. They really didn't have cer- a certain respect level for these women. I just got some yeah. head. It mm-hmm. almost was like demeaning, right? So then it's like, yeah, yeah. Harry, no, I don't want my wife mm-hmm. to do that because I've associated yeah. with something that's demeaning. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know why he doesn't allow, but it's interesting because he's a very popular yeah. rapper, big name, and he was like, you know, where does yeah, he doesn't allow I, I, I hear you. I hear you. And even, even, even other positions, mm-hmm. um, you know, so forth. Um, right now, it's, it's really, honestly, it's not even at the forth- forefront of my mind. Hey, man, I'm not, I don't I'm, want I'm, it to I'm be occupied by it. Mm-hmm. It's not even important. I want kids, so I know we got it. But I also want to please my wife, too. So mm-hmm. I want to please my wife. I want to make sure she she get an orgasm, not just me. Mm-hmm. You know, some men get the orgasm, the woman get the orgasm. So I want to know how to please her mm-hmm. um, in the bedroom between me and her. And we ain't watching porn. Right. Because I've had right. a couple do that. And I told them, like, y'all can't do that. And they ain't married to this day. So mm-hmm. when you bring certain things in your marriage, you don't stay married. You know, and that's that's so, another um I love that you brought that up because you'll hear people say, I remember I went to this conference and I had came back and I had done like a live and I was um talking about not fantasizing about other people besides your spouse, right? When you're having relations, you shouldn't be fantasizing yeah. about somebody else. And I remember a uh, family member, older family member commented, it was like, What? That's like natural. It's it's healthy. It's cool. And I was like, what? That's not it. Right. Because that fantasy could present one day as a reality and you can give in. Right. So I don't think people will say watching pee as a couple is healthy because you can learn stuff and it spices it up. Use your imagination. Get creative. Mm-hmm. I'm sure between the two of y'all, y'all can learn and discover and get creative in some of the things y'all can yeah. do. But it brings okay. expectation. Old boy on the screen, you like you said, 10 inches laying it down and she look over at you and you four. Now she's thinking otherwise, right? Or sits on the screen doing the splits and the tricks and he looking over you. Yeah, you can't yeah, even touch yeah. your toes. It's yeah, a problem, yeah. right? Now he's sneaking yeah. off looking at the splits because you ain't flexible. So it's I think it's unhealthy. I don't think it's wise. And, 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 and it is a fantasy. Mm-hmm. Porn is a fantasy. When you look at the, the behind the scenes of those women, some of those women have to be on drugs mm-hmm. because they go hours and hours and mm-hmm. hours and hours mm-hmm. into that stuff, and they get t- their bodies are tired and they're beyond exhaustion. Mm-hmm. They have to drink alcohol. Their mouths and throats are torn up because men have put their their stuff in their mouth, torn and ripped apart. Their, their all that stuff is torn. But you see, you see the uh, 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 you hear all that, okay. and you think that. It's a fantasy. Mm. It's a fantasy. They said the men as well. The men having to uh, take, you know, the blue pill and drugs, I, getting pumps and all that stuff. It's, yeah, it's a it's, fantasy. It's a fantasy. But then people and not that, being when, able to separate, right? Like it is a fantasy, but then not being able to separate, like it's not real. And then you want your wife or a husband to do it or these, I can't stop going back to the expectations. That's why I will hear a woman say, um, you know, what about the size kid? What about the size or whatever? And I, I, I reverse it to them and I'm like, help me understand. Right. So you as a sexually active woman, if you met a guy, cause they're saying like husband, right? Like your, your fiance, you know? So I've already established like he's, all the things for me to, you know, for him to be my husband. So I'm asking him like, so you meet a man and he checks off everything, everything, right? Enough that you're like, I want to do life with him. And then you find out it's not as big as you want. You would break it off. And there's people that are like, yeah. And call me naive, right? I just, but I'm trying to like, is it that big of a deal that like, there's nothing you can do when it's that time. Cause anybody <laughs> have sex all day, every day, right. You about to do life with that person. So there's time yeah. that y'all get to do it for them a couple of hours, whatever. There's nothing you can do to help achieve what it is you guys are looking to achieve. It blows my mind, but guess what? It's bringing in expectations. Cause if you didn't know, it would be nothing to compare it to. It would, yeah. it, it, it wouldn't matter. That's all you, you would know. You wouldn't know. You would just go in and y'all would have fun with whatever y'all both was bringing. Right. But it's being exposed to whether it was the P or, um, you know, relations with other people. And then you bring those expectations that don't belong to me. 
That's the way. If I get married, he better say I ain't got no expectations. You, what? I because I'm like, where did you get that from? Mm-hmm. I, well, I just I would like her because you know we in a counseling session. I would like uh, her to be able to X, Y, and Z. I'm gonna say, where did you learn that? So you want me to do what Keisha did? You want me to do what Cindy did on the P? No, that's not what we about to do. I'm gonna show you what I can do, and then that's that's gonna have to be good enough, Antoine. But don't. Mm-mm. And, you, and you grow from that. Y'all supposed to grow together. Amen. Learn together. Discover. Together. Grow. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, um, it's it's not a reality. Mm. It's not a reality, and I think that's dumb. If you got a, are you be all top and he ain't ten inches? One, I remember being in high school, and 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 women would boast about how big a guy was if they gave it up. They'll talk about it amongst themselves. A lot of this stuff is really, if we break it down, Apostle Johnson is one, John chapter, First John one, I think verse around verse twenty seven, the lust of the world, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life mm-hmm. do not come from God or the Father. It come from Satan in the world. Where are, we got to ask ourselves, where are we getting this advice? Mm-hmm. And even James says, the wisdom that comes from the world is fleshly, it's full of selfish ambition, mm. it's not of God, and it's demonic. Where are we getting these expectations from? Right, right. I even look at other podcasts. I'm like, I'm not listening to that podcast. Say it it's again. Ego driven, and, and some of this alpha male stuff is bull crap to me. And people eating it up. The beta, the alpha, the omega, all that. Some of this is just a different way of saying your ego and your pride. Mm. Or you're narcissistic, or you have no self-control. You're carnal-minded. That's what the Bible calls it. Carnal-minded. And mm. until we call it what it is and say what God says, nobody's getting free. Mm. We have to call it what God calls it or nobody gets free. So let me ask you, what about you here today, right? Antoine Thurston, do you consider yourself... C- completely free what does freedom look like right can you be free and still struggle or does freedom look like you don't have any struggles at all um and if you do still struggle what are some practical things that help you so me my definition of struggle as far as with porn i don't struggle with anymore okay um am i tempted every now and then but when i am tempted like i said before I meditate, I quiet my spirit, I meditate, I, I meditate on my scriptures that I told you about, Exodus 20 and 14 and other verses. And I tell the Holy Spirit, Lord, this don't please you. I'm not doing it. I don't want to do it. And I, and I say, Lord, I say yes to you. I say yes to you, God. And I submit myself to you. That's what I say. And I be still. I submit to him. And I start maybe singing a song or do something productive. I know that's right. And, and so. The song will humble that. Yeah. <laughs> as, 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 as far as. <clears throat> If I look at a woman, that's a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. I'm still excited about I'm excited about women. I get excited about women. Women are fine. Y'all are fine. You need to close them eyes, Antoine. You didn't say that a couple times. Close what, them. Didn't yeah. you say you wish your superpower? Y'all fine. What you said? Oh, y'all the, the fine. Struggle. No, you said the biggest struggle was them eyes. You need to train them eyes up, Antoine. Because let me tell you something. <laughs> I truly believe, I truly believe what you practice in your singleness, you perform in your marriage. So yeah, let me tell yeah. you something. You got wandering eyes and you just appreciate the woman because they so fine. <laughs> if you get married, them eyes going to be wandering too. Your wife is going to be fine, I believe. But when them days when she ain't looking all that, them eyes going to be looking. <laughs> Start training them now. I, 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 <laughs> That is my struggle. That is a struggle. Yeah. Now. I've been to the gym. I've been, I've been to school. I've been all these other places, and you know, you, I was, you know, you see something looking good. No, it ain't <laughs> like, looking good. Nasty. Is, you got it. No, no, see, that is not being nasty. I am not lusty. It, I just look. All I did. <laughs> look, y'all, act, y'all act like y'all act like I'm trying to sleep with it because I just been looking. You <laughs> said at the gym. All them things that yeah. look good died ain't too. No, there was nothing wrong with looking at nobody. It's fine. I ain't about to go down this rabbit hole with you. There is nothing wrong with looking. What is wrong with looking at somebody? So you don't look at me. Mm, uh, yeah, not the way you looking at them now. I think we looking I, at them differently. So how do you think I'm looking at them? Because you said the gym specifically. When I the think gym of gym, everywhere else I go. Body. When I think of gym, I'm thinking of body. What okay. You, 
Okay, so when we think about the body, I'm thinking about uh, you admiring the body parts. <laughs> right, stop looking at them body parts. Um, let me ask you, what's the difference between struggle and you said we don't struggle anymore? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You said you don't struggle anymore, but you're tempted. What, what do you think the difference is? Or you can just explain what does struggling look like for you to say, no, that's that's not me anymore. As far as with the P or Yeah, you gym? said when I asked you um about do you still struggle with P, you said not struggling, but you're still tempted that time. I'm still tempted. I, I get tempted. I think that <clears throat> the fact that we live in this flesh, mm -hmm. to warfare the enemy, I do get tempted, but it doesn't really play my mind. You know, it'll kind of be a thought. Mm -hmm. Um um if I may have a stressful day, the thought may come, but I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. Um, and the Bible says even Satan waiting for an opportune moment with Jesus. So I know the enemy is always going to try to throw something at me. Mm -hmm. So I have to keep my eyes open and be aware. But um, I don't struggle. Um, I'm well, when you say very, don't struggle, what does struggling look like? Because you said you're tempted. Some people would say they're one and the same. You're saying you're, really? you're tempted, but you don't struggle. What would struggling look like before when you used so to struggle? Struggling was M or P or either or or both and not wanting to do it, but doing it. Mm -hmm. See, there you go. Temptation mm -hmm. to me is the opportunity is available mm -hmm. to do it or present it, and I don't take it. Amen. I'm tempted, but I'm not attracted to it, and I'll right. walk away from it. Like, I like Chips Ahoy cookies. Like, I got it bad, right? And I remember I used to play myself where I'd be like, because, you know, they used to run this sale. It'd be like two for five, the whole pack. And I'm like, okay, that's a good deal, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm going to get them, but I'm only going to eat like three at a time. Antoine, I eat the whole sleeve. The whole sleeve is gone. And I feel no guilt. Just you want after another yum, 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 right? So good. And so it made me think about like chips are always can always tempt me, right? Because it's always good. I know it's good, but the struggle now isn't like uh, I, I don't want to buy them, but I'm a buy, them, right? I don't want to buy them, but I'm a buy. Them. So I like I get what you're saying that struggle that back and forth. But you, I'm aware that chips ahoy are good, mm -hmm. right? Like yum, but, like on yeah. the right day. Mm -hmm. but, but the reason I mentioned looking at other women is. No, I'm being frank, like, when you're on the track, and I say this, even to my therapist, you, you, can't, you can't be so overly spiritual. I can't be so overly spiritual that I act like they ain't beautiful. It mm -hmm. will be hypocrisy if I did that. It's like looking at Popeyes and say the chicken don't look good. I can look at the chicken and look at the menu and never order. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying um, to lust after these women. I'm saying if I see somebody that look good, praise the Lord. But I'm a man. I have to <laughs> I have to acknowledge my manner. Look, you beautiful. Oh, thank you're beautiful. you. You're attractive. Oh, but yeah. I'm not going to holler at you. Why? Oh, no, can, I, can I be blunt? Can I be blunt? You fine. You fine. Oh, you fine. Oh. You all in I'm serious. You fine. You got it going on. <laughs> You do. You got it going on. I'm serious. And the other one, Leo, and all my other friends. Y'all fine. But that doesn't mean I have to holler at you. Right, right. I can make it. It's like looking at a car. I can look at a Mercedes Benz and don't want it. That don't mean I want it because I look at it. Mm -hmm. You know? So I can I can acknowledge a woman that's beautiful or, or even, even a guy who's a handsome or whatever and not want nothing from me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I mean. Like, I think if if uh, if uh, if I can't if I can't look at a woman and I'm losing it, I need to work on something more. Amen. And yes, I'm working on bouncing my eyes and, and controlling that more. Amen. But I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and act like women don't look good either. Right, we know that. But I do God made y'all. He made y'all. Mm -hmm. He made y'all. Y'all fine. Y'all good. And so, you know, it ain't what it is. <laughs> it ain't what it is. He trying to do that. He trying to give all the confidence, trying to disarm me. I said what I said. I said what I said.
Because you said earlier, that's one of the things that you struggle with. So we're going to believe, yes, Antoine, they are fine. They are beautiful. But I want in preparation, if, you know, God is calling you to marriage, um, yeah. you will have trained up eyes, um, especially at the gym, because I know the leggings that they're wearing and the sports bras and the, you know, I don't even, I don't want the intrusive thoughts to even creep in. I don't even give the enemy the opportunity that that stare the enemy may be like gotcha as soon as you look gotcha and then, you know I don't even give him the stare to work with he's like Lord, I got you I got you I got you, you. I got the you. enemy gonna do right I amen he, I see what you try to do Antoine but listen I got one more question for you um what advice do you have for people that struggle with pornography but before you answer that I want to take a little break so start thinking about your answer for that and then i want to take a moment to thank our sponsors uh so let me get it on the screen because people be asking questions okay so i want to take the time out to thank our sponsors the sexless tribe app and a subtle reminder the sexless excuse me the sexless tribe app is the number one app making abstinence easier it connects abstinent christians with community and abstinence resources it is free to download and available in all app stores a subtle reminder is an apparel brand that helps keep you accountable against temptation from t-shirts to jewelry they have you covered Head over to a subtle reminder.com and check out the merchandise. And lastly, I want to say a thank you to our channel members who support this podcast financially. Your contributions are needed and appreciated. Right. So with that, Mr. Antoine, I can't believe what you try to do. Oh, boy, I, tell you. I want you to tell the people or give them some advice. Um that you would give them if they are struggling, right? Not even tempted, but struggling with uh, pornography currently. I would say there was once a time I didn't believe I could be free. Mm. I would say you also have to believe that you can be free Amen. before you are free. Check your belief system. Mm. Check how you check what you believe about God. Check what you believe about yourself. Um, and believe that you can be free from it. Because today I'm I am free. And, and 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 sometimes, honestly, and just being frank, it is not easy. It ain't easy. I mean, I know we're on a podcast talking, but it's not easy. Temptation is there. The struggle is there. Sin is always going to be readily available. Mm. And, and yeah. so it's really about making that decision and that choice. And God knows when you're ready. God knows when you're ready. Um, and so um, I would say so just surrender to God like even more. And God wants a yes every day. It's not oh. just a one time yes. Yes, yeah. And, and um I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on. A, on, a, on a. I remember um, Romans seven talks about uh, Paul gives a discourse of sin in seven, and he says, "What I want to do, I don't. Mm -hmm. do. What I want to do is, is is there, but then there's evil always with me." That is actually a rabbinic or Jewish. Um, teaching that he implements in scripture. And it really means the desire to do good and desire to do evil. And they're always available in every human being, basically. And he gets to the end and he says, who gonna deliver me from this body of death? Mm. Says Jesus Christ. And 2022, yeah, 2022, I was, I was going through some depression, some sadness. And I started, I went into my old cycle. I went to an old cycle. And I was crying out to God, I'm watching porn, and I was like in and out, in and out. And God was breaking me. Breaking mm, me amen. And I kid you not, I had this vision. I went into this vision and I saw a woman crying. And she said, I want to please you. I don't want to sin. And it was about Romans 7, literally Romans 7. And Jesus Christ came down from heaven and he said to her, you are a Romans 7 believer. Ask me to strengthen your will so Ooh. you can be a Romans 8, a Romans 8 believer. Because the Romans 8 believer lives by the Spirit and it's empowered by the Holy Spirit. 
And he said, strengthen your will. Your will is too weak. And so from that moment, I saw things a lot different. That everybody's not at the same level spiritually. Um, and 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 I'm I'm just gonna be even honest. No, go ahead. I saw the Holy Spirit in, in the church once. It was a couple of years ago. And the Holy Spirit said this literally. The Holy Spirit said the difference between Matthew 7, workers of iniquity, those that work iniquity, and the Romans 7 believer is desire. And he kept saying it is their desire to live holy or not. Oh, you make me I, cry. Wow. No, he said, I know their desire if they want to please me or not. And then I saw like angels, angels were saying that angels would say, we know the difference between those that work iniquity and those that are struggling with sin, that Ooh. want to please God, like, mm. like literally want to please God. Mm. And those that really just, you're just trying to, you just, you just don't really, you just trying to play with God, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And God knows, God really does know. And, and it was last year, Jesus came in the room and he, I saw this thin line. It was a gold line. And I saw on the right, uh, Romans 7 believers. And then on the left, workers of iniquity. And it's like God was saying, I know the difference between the two. I know who really has a heart for me. Mm. And who just kind of just playing. And so for those that are struggling, you're not always going to be here. Because I was once a Romans 7 believer. But it will, it will affect your life. And it will affect your reward. I'll say like that. Mm-hmm. And so ask the Holy Spirit to help you in that area. And just say yes to him. Just say yes and ask God for a strategy and how to, to overcome it. You know, Jesus says to the seven churches, he took all of them to overcome. Nikaios, the Greek word, it means to actually kill someone or, or to defeat an opponent in battle. I don't know if you've ever been in a fight. A fight is never pretty. And so we are in a war. We're in a war with the devil, the world, and ourselves. It's always not easy. You're looking at a man that child in the pulpit struggling, you know? And so don't beat yourself up, but also become absolute resolute in your thinking. Mm. You, will limit, you will limit the will of God in your life if you don't overcome it, because there are certain things God can't bless you with because he can't trust you with. It may not affect your salvation, but it will affect your reward your and reward. your life on earth. Right, come on. It'll affect your reward and your life on earth. It'll life affect the next generation. Mm. You know, it may not affect your salvation. It'll affect the life you live. <clears throat> and so, just say yes to God over and over. Just say yes to the Holy Spirit. Amen. And ask the Holy Spirit to help. And confess it. When you keep stuff bottled in, that verse in James, it says confess your sins one to another, that you be healed and be saved. If you don't ever talk about it and confess it, Satan in the flesh will always win. Amen. You gotta find a safe place. Amen. Antoine, first let me just say, I'm trying to think of the word. Like I applaud you. I appreciate you. Um, being as vulnerable and transparent as you were, um, whether people admit it or not, I truly believe there's people that can relate to some of the things you're saying where perversion bought you, but I, I'm, I'm grateful for you being an overcomer and truly, um, identifying as free. Right. So I just want to say thank you for that. Just leave putting it all out there. I appreciate that. Um, I didn't know where this was going to go, but i I appreciate where it went, right? And there's so much that's going through mm -hmm. my mind. Uh, so I just want to say thank you for the people that want to connect with you, whether it's, you know, learning more about your books or asking questions or maybe want to know if you're single. I don't know. I'm just saying, right? If people got questions, how can they connect with you um, and follow up with you, you know, via social media? Definitely. I am on, yeah, I'm on social media, Instagram, Antoine Thurston, D. Thurston. Um, I'm on Facebook, Instagram. I have a YouTube channel where I minister the word of God and I have old podcast episodes on there. So they can click my link tree and, and get my book. My book is available on all major platforms, online platforms and Amazon. Um, got two books. Um, so definitely hit me up. Um, I can, I'm, Hey, how would the Lord lead you? Okay, so. man. However, the Lord leads you. Antoine, mm -hmm. it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. 
Definitely. Uh, and it's a privilege. It is a privilege. And I enjoyed the, the last conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. All right, Mr. Antoine D. Thurston. Thank you. <sighs> Woo. All right, y'all. So that's it. Um, man, that was that was a lot. That was a lot. Uh, but listen, I want to hear from the replay watchers. So if you're watching this video after it has been posted, I still want to hear back from you. So make sure you leave a comment in the comment section regarding anything that was spoken about on this uh, interview tonight. For the people that tuned in live and shared the video, I just want to say thank you so much. And I truly hope something was shared tonight that was edifying to you while abstaining. Before you head out, make sure you like this video and make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel and turn that bell notification on. If you really enjoyed this episode, make sure you share it out. Do not withhold this good thing, right? Share it out to someone. And guys, as always, I want you to remember, it doesn't matter what the world says. It only matters what the word says. So keep pressing towards the mark. Amen. Amen. Woo!